Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. We are new here. I'm Gay Wai, and I'm the first year in class here of Lado Tanikola University. So, if you are new to my channel, please click the support button and click on the notification bell behind this so as to get notified anytime I post new videos. So, in today's video, I'm going to be talking, be giving you five main tips that you can use to study art topics. If there are any art topics, absolutely, yes. There are some topics that students find very hard like, to. Um, read and understand. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you five main tips that you can use to study them and understand them. So let's dive into the main tips that I'm going to be talking about is the use of mnemonics and relation. The use of mnemonics, what mnemonics is just all about is um making like quoting whatever you want to read. Like if you want to read a particular topic and you find it very difficult to understand some some lines or some maybe they have to give you examples of some stuff. So you can just quote them with maybe their first letter or whatever. There are these um in our junior secondary school days, we are all familiar with Mr. Nigerati. So those are kinds of um mnemonics. That's an example of mnemonics. The way that you quote whatever you want to read in a way that you do only can understand or someone else can also understand. So Mr. Niger D now we all know that M is for movement and the, all, all that. So you quote anything that you want to read in a way that you will understand by yourself so that well, even if you didn't really understand anything, once you remember what you quote it with, you will be able to uh, explain it. My for me uh, personally I believe in using my own memory. So I still use those that are like general ones. But the ones that you use by yourself, like you, if you are reading and you do not understand this thing, I can remember when I was pre preparing for my work, the um, other metamorphosis, this practical aspect that they react to that, which was which is is under complete and incomplete. So I, I quote the incomplete metamorphosis with Grapota local. So Gra is for grasshopper, Ko is for um, cockroach, um, Ta is for termites, Lok is for locust, and Half is for Ophi. So using that, even in my UTM exam, anywhere I see which of the following is uh, an example of complete metamorphosis or incomplete, I don't have any problem. Since I read or uh, since I already quote all the um incomplete metamorphosis. So anytime I see anything related to them, I can easily um print the correct answer. And the next one that, that I talk about is mnemonics and relation. So how you relate whatever you are reading with things around you. Like okay, if you are reading now, you can relate it with your name. You can relate it with something very close to you. Next, my name, like A and P. So A and P are very are my media and I'm still familiar. In. So anytime I have something like that, I still normally use A and P. Like A and P are also close. So anytime I see anything about them, I like I will flash back to how I use whatever I used to code it, and I remember it. In. Another thing that you can use in relating to letters like monocot and dicot, difference between the two. M starts monocot and you know that M also starts maze. So maze is just an example of monocot. Everything about maze, like everything about you know, everything you know about it, will be the characteristic of monocot. Why the opposite will be the characteristic of dicot. So by that, you once you remember monocot and you remember the example, you can remember a lot of things about it. So those are the ways that you can code. Like there's still another one that I still normally use. I'm just talking about those ones that I remember very well, like cone, cone cells in the hive. So cone cells this with color. C start, starts with uh, cone starts with C, color also starts with C. So you can just use those things whenever you are reading. Just check those things that are related. That are, so those are the things that you should um, join together just for you to understand whatever you are reading. So relating is very important and use of mnemonics is very important. So the second one I'm going to be talking about is YouTube video. Like presently, there are over 2 billion people on YouTube with different ideas. So you can just go to YouTube, search any topic that you find very difficult, watch videos on them, make sure you judge anything you let get down then solve questions on them. So by that, you, you will not have any problem um, on any topic. So by the end of this video, I'm going to drop like three main channels that are very important for most O-level exams. So that's why you have to watch this video to end. Now, the third thing I'm going to be talking about is the tutorial aspect. So you have to join tutorial. You know that there are, you still have a lot that you don't understand. Nobody will come to your room to teach you. So go out, attend tutorial that you know that they are offering what you need. So join tutorials. And another one is meet with people like your friends. So you, you 
we have one problem as a student. We don't want to share our problem with our friends so that they will not think okay, they are not making sense enough. So if you know you did not know anything, move close to those that you know that they can actually help you. So the fourth thing I'm going to be talking about is God factor. Like you have to take God factor very important. We do pray that God should give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. He's the only one that can give. So if you know that there is any aspect that you did not understand while studying, please, please, it's very important. It's very important that you pray before reading. I don't know, uh, most, not everybody actually. So if you pray before you read, then pray probably after reading. So the last thing I'm going to be talking about is consistency. If you know that you have topics that you find very difficult, stay consistent with them. I've done a lot of messages that people, someone will just tell me, I do not know this, I do not know that. How many times have you read this? So if you know that you are finding a particular topic very difficult, stay glued to it, like study it often, more than you study other ones, so that you'll be able to get it. So don't think that I cannot get this, so because I'm not doing it, let me drop it. It will be very funny that when you day of your exam, you will find like your most question will actually come out from that particular topic. I heard about someone's case that said he, he left, um, I mean, he, he knows linear expansibility very well. It was UI post CTN. He said he met seven questions only on linear expansivity. And I mean, on under expansivity, both linear um, and area expansivity. So out of 25 six questions, he met seven questions on linear expansivity. Let's assume he didn't know it. So what, what will he be saying after the exam? That is why it's very important for you to make sure that you touch all aspects. So with these five tips, I think you should be able to tackle all the topics and read all the topics that you still find very difficult till now. So for the YouTube aspect that I talked about, if you know that you are having problems with data, just get the night nice sub. 100 naira should not be too much. If you are using anything, 100 naira should not be too much to get uh, to get data for what you need. So if you use 100 naira, you get one click for night so. So and it will start around midnight. You can just use that. Use that medium. Download the video. Watch it at your convenient time. Jot some things down. So with that, you should be able to understand our topics like friction. Now those are examples of topics that people find very difficult. Density. So organic chemistry. All those aspects, just make sure you download videos on them, then study them. So for the first channel that I'm going to be talking about, uh, it's very like it's very important that you actually subscribe to their channel. If you know that you, you are having some topics that you are finding very difficult. The first one is organic chemistry to talk. Organic chemistry to talk is a channel that deals with both physics, mostly physics and chemistry, though they deal with other aspects too. For almost all O level topics under chemistry and physics are in their channel. Like the video is already there. So, what you just have to do is get your data, then go there and watch and learn. Judge down whatever you watch. So, those ones can help you without even going to anybody at your own convenience. Then, and one of the important of those YouTube videos is that they are, they are simplified in a way that you understand them easily. So the second YouTube channel is our Professor Dave. I'm going to write their names on the on whenever I'm going to see this video. So Professor Dave also, like I can beat my chest on, the, on their videos. If you actually watch them carefully, like not just once, like twice, then judge whatever you see there down. They are explicit enough to give you everything you need about any topic, like any video you watch on it. The last one is um, BY Juice, like their own channel to be very, very, for biology aspect, I can beat my chest on it. For biology aspect, if you actually go there, watch videos on them, all those topics, you won't have any problem with them again. So, with these five tips that I've mentioned, I think I've been able to, um, to give you what you actually need and topics that you find very difficult. So the first tip is, is make sure that you use mnemonics or code with something very close to you. The second one is use of YouTube videos. The third one is attending tutorial. The fourth one is God factor and the last one is consistency. So with all this I've mentioned, I think you should be able to tackle all topics that you are finding very difficult. If you are watching this video up to this moment, please, please and please subscribe, please. Please subscribe. So see you in my next video. Bye.